Hey guys, we're in Austin, Texas at the Long Center for Performing Arts. Kind of a dry spot because it is a little bit wet today. Got some rain going on, but all these bikes have fenders. So I've actually been out, you know, cruising around, getting a little misty myself, having fun. And my pants are staying fairly dry, so that's a testament to the fenders. We are checking out the Rad City Step Through. Comes in black and white. They also have a high step version. Uh, the major differences I've noticed is that this one has the bottle cage bosses right there, way down below that down tube, but they've been able to position the battery a little bit more forward and lower on the frame. I don't know if it's actually much lower. This is pretty lower, but it's a little bit far back. Uh, what they're going for here is a more approachable frame, so you can step over very easily. I've taken the battery out of this one just to show you how much reinforcement they've got going on. Look at these gussets right here, these plates. You can see the internally routed cables. And then down here, it's almost like a mini top tube, and it surrounds and protects the battery pack. Now, the black models look really great because a lot of the cables and grips and everything are all black, but I noticed that they didn't do black spokes like they've done on some of the, the Rad Rover and other mountain models like the Mini and stuff. And I actually think it... It looks pretty classy. We've got that disc brake rotor also in silver and the suspension pork stanchions. We've got a new uh, head tube badge right there, Rad Power Bikes. This is the third generation of the Rad City step through. So they've been refining it a little bit each year. They introduced the step through after the high step. So this one has a badge that says four. So it's kind of the fourth generation. That's what we're looking at here. Same motor system, same battery. It's interchangeable, which is really nice because you know, maybe you got this, you got the Rad Rover, you might even have last year's version. It's really cool that they're they're using the same interface. I feel like their battery, it's pretty, pretty solid and it's a little bit more affordable because they've separated the controller. So that's the motor controller. Again, on the white model, things stand out a little bit more. It's a, a blend of white and black. The black fenders, these are plastic. They're offering good coverage like I talked about. Not quite as low in the front as they could be. I've seen some of these really fancy fenders that go even lower, but these ones aren't going to get hung up on curbs and stuff. And if you're turning and pedaling and you bump that rubber flap, it's not going to get cracked. So I appreciate that. There's a little bit of rattle happening, but not a whole lot. I noticed that these mounts occasionally slop around up and down. They aren't mounted uh, directly to the lowers on the suspension fork, but in the rear, it's it's a little bit less. You can see there's a mounting point right there. And then back here, we've got the light with a cable running underneath the fender and then down through here. So their wire management is pretty good. This is the battery mounting point, And then that is the 12 magnet cadence sensor. So it's fairly high resolution. It starts and stops quickly. It's not quite as dynamic as like a torque sensor or a multi-sensor, but this is one of the trade-offs when you're going for a more affordably priced electric bike. And these are pretty good. They are $14.99. So for me, anything under $1,500, I consider fairly affordable. You do, you do have some trade-offs and stuff, but in my opinion, I think Rad Power Bikes does a really good job creating good value there. So a lot of their decisions, they don't go completely cheap, right? Like you've got an aluminum alloy, a chain ring protector that, that doubles as a guide. So that's gonna help protect your pants. It's gonna make sure the chain doesn't bounce off. Um, you know, still a steel 46 tooth chain ring right there. But when we come back to the freewheel, it goes 11 to 34 tooth. This is DNP nickel coated. So it shifts a little smoother and it's not gonna be um, rusting quite as much as just a, a more basic, cheaper part. So that's a real upgrade, especially the range on this. So 11 to 34, so frequently I'm seeing 14 to 28 tooth freewheels. Uh, so again, good on your rad. That's a big upgrade for me and it's easy to overlook, but that's gonna help you start climbing and also just start from standstill a lot easier as long as you remember to downshift before you start. That's something I frequently forget. Um, we've got a nice steel, this is like a derailleur protector. See the Shimano Acera derailleur. This is three steps up from the base level. It goes like Turney, Altus, Acera. A little bit lighter weight, nicer materials, maybe a little bit stiffer springs in there. There's still some bouncing and stuff. This isn't like mountain bike grade derailleur, but it's it's better than most. And then we've got this neoprene slap guard here, which is gonna help to keep that white frame looking clean. Now, if we go over to the black frame, see how it blends in really nicely? it's still gonna keep that chain from chipping the black paint and there's silver underneath. So again, great job with that. We've even got some 
bosses right here, it looks like you could mount a frame lock. We've got the integrated rear rack, which has a lot of mounting points on top, including a yep compatible window for like a child seat, which they do sell separately. Pannier hangers, you can hang them off the side. Rad has a bunch of different options. This is standard gauge tubing, and then there's the thicker tubing up top, which is good for their panniers. So they, they mount them a little higher, and they've just got these plastic latches. Water resistant, which is very nice. Rad Power Bikes is based in Seattle, Washington, where it rains a lot. And then there's bungee loop. So if you want, that's just the cheapest solution. You got some, some wood or books or something, and as long as it's not raining, you just use the bungee cable. Uh, really nice to see so many just thoughtful, a thoughtful design choices and, and i'll show you another one so see this quick release seat binder see how long it is that is longer than average and it makes it easier to undo you're not having to strain your fingers it's a lot smoother but you can clamp it down pretty hard that 27.2 millimeter seat post diameter it slides right down they do sell a suspension seat post which pairs with that suspension fork very nicely that's an optional upgrade but look at how low that goes see how it's not colliding with the like rack stays right here and there's even like a handle built into the the seat so a lot of little things like that so that means that you have a lower minimum saddle height and this bike is designed to be approachable remember like stepping over it like this having your butt on the saddle and being able to put your feet down and maybe stabilize the bike at traffic signals or stop signs that's all really important especially if you're someone who isn't riding a whole lot or maybe you've got that child seat on the back or you're loaded up with cargo the other thing they've done is they've got this modular rack system so there's a front rack that can mount to that front steer tube and that's the way you want it now the rack by mounting it to the frame you're getting kind of the strength and rigidity of the frame versus having a rack that's mounted to the forks and stuff and so as you turn the rack would slop around and it might dump off to the side you'll notice that we parked the bike and if i if i let go of it it kind of tips to the side so the rack would be it would be situated forward the unfortunate thing is see how we've got that nice headlight right there that just went off it times off after like five minutes that has to be relocated underneath the rack and then it doesn't point where you steer so that's one of the little trade-offs something you might want to keep in mind also i find that when i'm steering and i've got one of those racks built onto the front it's sort of it's sort of weird because it's like I'm I'm used to seeing the bike turn and then with the rack the rack just stays straight the whole time so that's one of my little points of feedback just a, a consideration if you get that of course they do include a cable extender to remount that light and then the rear lights already mounted perfectly really well protected under this rear rack they've even got some an opening here so you can see the light from the side as well as directly behind you and there's brake light activation whenever you pull those those brakes. Not only does it send a signal to cut off the motor to engage regenerative braking, but it also makes that rear light go bright. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, but coming back to, to the other components that are nice little upgrades. These pedals, it's a very minor thing, but they're fairly large. They offer good traction, especially in wet conditions like this. This is what I upgrade to frequently. Uh, other more affordable electric bikes, you know, you're kind of saving money off right off the bat, but then you have to do these little upgrades. And I just find that you don't have to do that as much with Rad. They've got good customer support. It's like seven days a week. They've got a one-year comprehensive warranty. And they've got this like mobile delivery service thing in some of the major cities, including Austin. So they'll like assemble and deliver your bike for 149 bucks. So that's pretty cool. Coming back to the hardware, uh, this is an SR Sun Tour unbranded suspension fork, 80 millimeters of travel. And it does have compression adjust and preload. So you can preload that spring if you've got that front rack or you're a heavier rider. You don't want to lose some of your travel just based on initial weight. So you preload it and then you're getting full, more full travel. So that, that's really nice. It is a little bit heavier than like an air fork. It's not the fanciest thing in the world, but I like that at least it's adjustable. And you have quick release down here. Check it out. These are 12 gauge spokes, extra thick. Really nice to see that especially on a bike that might be ridden a little bit further, that weighs a little bit more. These are 65.3 pounds, and this one's 63.6 pounds. So it's actually a little bit lighter to go with the high step, and it's a little bit stiffer. So this frame feels sportier, and the battery weight and stuff that we talked about, that's one of the big trade-offs if you're considering one or the other. This one's also slightly smaller than that. So this is sort of their medium large. This is like their small medium. But there's a lot of adjustability in this thing. It's a 100 millimeter adjustable angle stem, zero to 60 degrees. You get that on all the bikes. In this case, really upright, and that's gonna give you kind of the Dutch upright body position. Good for your back and neck. You know, you're not, you're not leaning really far forward. Even these handlebars, they're really swept back. 
You've got these nice ergonomic grips, stitched faux leather. Same with the saddle, they match, so it's black on black and this sort of rich brown over here. Yeah, so anyway, suspension fork, comfort, upright body position, adjustable saddle height, really nice. And then down here with these tires, these are co-branded. So it says Rad Power Bikes by Kenda. These have K-Shield, it's sort of a puncture resistant tire casing in addition to reflective sidewall stripes. So that's really going to support those lights that we talked about. And they offer a pretty good comfort level too. It's, it's got this like checkerboard pattern that's that's decent on paved surfaces and offers you a good amount of traction off-road. So it's sort of the go anywhere solution. And the volume on these things is, it's pretty good as well. You know, they call them, it's like kind of a 26 inch by 2.3. Uh, that's pretty good. I've seen a lot of tires that are sort of 1.95 or, you know, 2.125. So to see a little bit fatter tire, that's gonna give you some stability and comfort because of the air volume. And then of course, braking. We've got 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes, front and rear, same thing on all these bikes with four finger levers. And it's nice to have a longer lever with that nice comfortable uh, rubberized edge so that when you are pulling on these, you don't kind of hurt your fingers. It's also not as cold, which is nice in the mornings. We've got an integrated bell right here and a big SIS index paddle shifter, like a thumb shifter. And I feel like you do have to reach a little bit with these compared to the trigger shifters that are a bit sportier, but they added that because the twist throttle here, it's got this bigger housing. So I don't think they had room to use the triggers. And also this is just so intuitive. It's got that nice numeric readout. It works well with gloves as well. So that's that's an upgrade. They, they did away with this on off button for the twist throttle that they've had in years past. And that might just be one fewer things to break. And also it could be confusing for people when they're like, why isn't my throttle working? And they might be looking at the display and forgetting about that button. So I understand that. I kind of liked it. It was nice to be able to completely disable the throttle. But for those of you who don't want it, you can just disconnect the throttle right here. And again, you'll notice all these wires coming through. That's because both brake levers have the motor inhibitor brake light activation. And we've got the display, we got the button pad over here. So I'm gonna come back and go over to the display in just a second. But I wanna point out that the kickstand is really well positioned here towards the rear end of the bike. And when I've kicked it up, it hasn't been colliding with that disc brake rotor, which is something I listen for a lot. The bigger rotors can get bent and make some noise over time. So let's try it. Yeah, see how it stays fairly clear. It offers adjustable length, so you can have the bike tipping pretty far over like this and feel very stable, or you can lean it up a little bit taller, which I do a lot of times for pictures. Okay, just making a circle here, trying to see if there's anything else that I want to call out. It, I think I do want to point out this little torque arm here. So it's a steel torque arm. The frames are aluminum alloy, which is a lightweight, soft material, and over time, there's kind of an axle here with these flat portions and that can chew into the aluminum alloy frame. So having an additional steel torque arm to spread out that pressure from this 750 watt gearless hub motor is a good thing. All the Rad Power bikes have torque arms built in and it makes a lot of sense to me. This motor has a little bit less torque than some of their geared motors on the mountain bikes. So it's like 41 Newton meters here versus 80 Newton meters on the Rad Rover and the Rad Minis and stuff. And, you know, I, I was just asking Mike, founder of this company, you know, why, why are you still using this gearless motor? You know, it is a little bit heavier. It's like 10 pounds versus 8.7 pounds. Um, I think they'd have to use a different motor here anyways, because these are, these are narrower wheels compared to the fat bikes. It's 135 millimeter dropout in the rear here. And he was like, well, yeah, you know, this is really quiet. It's kind of bulletproof because there are no gears interacting with each other and it's smooth. It, has, it offers that regenerative braking thing, which is kind of fun. For me, the trade-off between having regen, but the additional weight that this motor adds, it's kind of a toss up. There's also a little bit of drag on this. If you completely turn the bike off and you're just pedaling like normal, we've got a little bit of magnetic repelling happening inside there on the stators and the, the rare earth magnets. So there's a little bit of drag, not a whole lot. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. So if I tip the bike up like this, and then I spin the wheel, see how it doesn't coast quite as freely as if uh, maybe like the front wheel where it would just spin and spin. So it's not a whole lot, but that is one of the trade-offs. I, I feel like the durability of these motors and the smooth quietness make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna boot this thing up. I'm holding the mode button over here. The display comes to life. It does swivel a little bit to give you a reduced glare. And they've got a full-size USB type A port in the bottom. 
putting out one amp. So that is very nice. They have a mount you can use for your smartphone or maybe additional lights or music player. Really cool to see something that's, it's basically the same display they've been using for a long time, but they've upgraded it with like some labeling and that USB port it is, is always been nice to have that. So I wanna point out with their battery system down here, you can lock it to the frame in the off position. And that way people wouldn't tamper with your, they couldn't turn on the bike and use the throttle. That's kind of a neat feature. So that way you don't have to take the battery with you, but the bike is feels a little bit more secure. Of course, having a removable battery like this is really convenient if you work in an office place, um, or maybe you have to store your bike outside and you wanna keep the battery inside where it's a little bit cooler and drier. These are highly water resistant. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about. You can ride them in rain and everything according to the company. You don't want to submerge any of this stuff, but you know, it does have fenders. It is designed to be kind of an all weather setup. So anyway, coming back to the battery, especially in a place like Austin where it can get really hot, avoid leaving your battery in extreme heat because that does degrade the cells. I think they're using Samsung cells, 3,500 milliamp. And again, they've got that good warranty and a relatively affordable replacement cost for their batteries because the controller is separate. So that's another, it's just a highlight for me, something worth pointing out. To me, Rad Power Bikes is like at the high end of the value priced electric bikes. And, and I like to point out all the things that I that I like about it. Yeah, sure, there there are some trade-offs. And in this case, it's the, the frame flex a little bit, the weight, and some of that's because you've got these extra features. So anyway, coming back to the display, um, I'm gonna turn on the backlighting real quick here by holding up and mode. There we go, so it gets a little bit easier to see if you're riding at night. There are three levels of brightness that you can adjust. Here's the headlight. I'm, I'm a big fan of this thing. It's actually a big improvement over years past because you can see it from more angles. The old one kind of had a, a block on the side. So now you're going to be seen in addition to those reflective sidewall stripes. You've got this circle LED ring, which is really nice. And then a focused main beam. I was using this at night the other day and it's, it's actually pretty good. You know, you can see the trail and I really appreciate that. It's not just B-seamed. And then back here, there's a solo by spinning. It's, it's a one LED light. It's not actually flashing right now. That's an interference with my camera capture rate. But if there's a button on the bottom that does change it to flash mode. Not working on this one, but it would just go blink, 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 blink. Let's see if the motor inhibitors are working. There we go. So there's the brake light that was talking about. So for me, this is, this is really a total win. Having integrated lights, a flashing mode, and a bright mode for, for when you're stopping. It's really well protected right there. They've, they've just done a great job. And it also has a quick disconnect. So if the light gets damaged, you can get a replacement part and you won't have to wire it all the way back through the frame. So back up here at the display panel, we've got five ticks for the battery readout, which for me, it'd be nice if there were 10 or a percentage odometer there next to it. And if I press the mode button here, it switches to trip distance. And then down here, there's speed in the middle. But if I hold the up arrow, we can get average speed and max speed. So lots of lots of good feedback on this. And then pedal assist level, it always starts in level one and that throttle is hot, even in level zero. So that, you know, be careful with this thing. A lot of times I'll stand over the frame before I turn it on just as a kind of a safety step. Um, and you can go all the way up to five. That's gonna be the highest level of assist. That'll give you the full 750 watts of power and you can see the watt meter next to it and you get an idea of how hard the bike is working. So the other secret here is if you hold the down arrow for a second, you get walk mode. And that's, that's really handy if there's a hill or something you don't feel comfortable riding up or maybe there's a big crowd and you just, you've got your bike loaded up and you, you don't wanna be riding and precariously, but you also don't wanna push this 60 plus pound bike. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good option to have. You can also hold up and down that's going to introduce the settings so you can change the wheel size, the top speed. You can actually lower this a little bit if you're someone who's just feels more comfortable. You want to extend the range and then the brightness. So we're at level one, two and three. So I'm going to keep it up, up high. You can change to kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour. When you're done, you just hold the mode button and exit. So that's a that's a pretty good overview. The final piece is this little you know shifter that we talked about. Make sure you're in that lower gear when you stop. It's gonna really help you and save your knees. But then again, having a throttle and being able to activate that from zero is really nice. I, I appreciate it, but this doesn't have as much torque as the mountain bike motors, okay? So, you know, it, there's a lot of different factors in there to think about, and those are just some ride tips for you guys. 
If you're really looking to maximize safety, in addition to the lights and reflective sidewalls, I think the white frame, it's giving you the, big, the biggest visual footprint. And I appreciate that. But I understand, you know, a lot of times it's a his and hers situation. So I think they've done a really good job to give you lots of options. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps you out. Let's get out there and take a ride. Okay guys, I'm gonna take the white one. I like how it looks. Uh, but they all have this nice satin finish. I do, I do wanna mention that they used to offer a couple sizes in the high step. It used to be 16 and 19 inches, and now they've just gone with 18 and a half, and they're keeping this one at, at 16. I, I measured it at like you know, 14 and a half, actually, the seat tube, so my records are gonna be slightly different than the official RAD records, but uh, I hope it helps you, I'm trying to be consistent with all my stuff. I actually, I wanna take this one all the way up to level five. It's amazing how quiet it is, given the high, high power of the motor. And here we go. I feel like I hear the tires more than, than the motor. Very stable, feels pretty good. Got the bell and everything, might do some shifting. Little bit of braking. Maybe get on onto the, the wet here and look at the fenders. Feeling pretty good. You definitely feel that rain <laughs> when you start moving around, but the bike doesn't bike doesn't really care. there is Austin. This is where I used to, to live and ride to work every day, actually on a trail right down there. And one day I was going really fast and I went across the grass and I got back onto the concrete and I turned and I slid out and I hit my chin, scraped up my arm and stuff. So be careful if you're riding in the rain, be careful. But I hope you all get to visit Austin someday because it's a really beautiful place. And they have some cool ballets and stuff that happen here at the Long Center. It's a really uh, special place for me. So I got the lights on. I'm gonna hand you guys off to my buddy Eric and right. just get some ride footage. Wish me luck. See the brake light back there? Brake test, pretty quiet, feeling really good. Yeah, these things are, actually I wanna do a frame flex test here. Wiggle it around. I mean that's, I do this on some of the other bikes that have the rear rack battery and the frame flexes and you just, you can have speed wobble and I haven't felt that here. They do have a little bit slacker head tube angle so like the bike will kinda, you know, wants to kinda steer like smooth and lazy. But again, I haven't noticed the wobble while I'm actually riding, which I appreciate. And I think a lot of that's because of the battery position and then the extra reinforcement that we talked about. Okay guys, from here you can see a 46 tooth steel chain ring with the aluminum alloy guide. I'm gonna go on the highest level of assist so you can try to hear the motor. It's fairly quiet. Um, and I do wanna point out that Rad Power Bikes has been using these Rad Cities, the black one, uh, to deliver Domino's pizzas. So that's pretty cool. Props to Domino's for using something sustainable and it doesn't require as much traffic or parking issues. It's probably a lot of fun for their employees too, but I think it's a testament to the reliability of these bikes that that's who they chose. They've got this cool like insulated bag and I think they sell a lot of those accessories to the public too. So here we go. Believe it or not, we hit the top speed there, 20 miles per hour. It's pretty easy to do. I just feel like the bike, maybe it's the, the quietness that you're like, whoa, it, it goes it goes faster than you'd expect. Um, 
there are like a whole lot of hills around here, but I'm going to go off road onto the grass just so you can listen to the, the chain and everything else, the fenders. They do rattle like a little bit, but it's not too bad. Uh, the other thing I've done here is I'm in the lowest gear I shifted down before I stopped, and that's going to stretch the chain out a little bit more so I won't get as much chain bounce. So I hope that helps you if you're concerned about the quiet. Nice. Looks like the camera stayed pretty clean. Even going through that like mud puddle is pretty good. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna do a suspension shot too here. Let's see how that, yeah. Definitely went for a little climb there and it worked pretty well. Well guys, I think that's about it. I've had a blast looking at these Rad Power bikes. The Rad City is probably one of the more popular bikes for them because they're so versatile. Like you, you still get some comfort and stability, but the rack comes with it. You know, you have to pay for that on some of their other models like the Rad Rover. You still get the fenders and everything. It's fairly nimble. I, I like these, they're quieter because the tread, you know, you're not getting as much friction as the, the wider tires. Um, I've, I've measured all the specs for these, like standover height, minimum saddle height, weight, and everything back at electricbikereview.com. I do have a cool comparison tool there, so you can look at the bikes back to back and try to make a decision or leave a comment. We do our best to, to help you out on that. Ride safe out there. Love ya. We'll see you next time.